What's up, guys? Welcome to another exciting edition of Real Estate Podcast, episode 365. I'm here with Griffin. I'm here with Trav. We're staying the hell out of arm's length of Reacher without. Uh, yeah, actually, we would rampage. <laughs> yeah, sure. Dude, yeah. The... So, uh, yeah, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. AKA the UK's CIA or. Yeah. Or, or like Shankfest City Limits. <laughs> like that motherfucker was bodying people the whole movie, dude. Yeah, right. Whenever the chick gets there and meets the rich guy on the island, I'm like, oh, that's a Nazi. Oh, yeah, right. I could tell instantly. I love how by the end of the movie, Henry Cavill's just wearing Nazi shit, just indiscriminately <laughs> shooting Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> When they run in on that camp, well, they're like, "We gotta rescue our buddy. It's on the way." Yeah, and they just yeah. fuck everybody up. Yeah. Well, what was crazy was the level of like no hesitation in the gunfire yeah. in this movie. No. Kick a door open, mow them down. Who gives a shit? Move on. Yeah. And by the way, I think there's broccoli in your teeth, man. But uh, anyway, yeah. You know, like, he's like, I kind of like it. The battery on his nipples. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like it. So. So, do you guys think, because of this role, that this is why there were those uh, rumors of him playing James Bond for a while? Wasn't that before this, though? Yeah, I was thinking that it was before it as well. Because, I mean, when did that last James Bond movie come out? The one where they killed James Bond? Yeah. Spoiler alert. We don't talk about that. (laughs) What What was the name of the last one? Uh, no time to die. Oh, clever. All right, 20. That was 2021. So it's been three years. You know, and that was, and we knew that it was going to be Daniel Craig's last outing before going into it. So it was easily I, like a, there was easily a six month span where we were covering. It seemed like there was an article every week about him and Bond, though. Yeah. I well, think he British. put, yeah. And he put interest out there that he would love to play Bond. And I think that, that that might be one thing that helped actually helped him get this role. It's like, well, if, I mean, are they going to cast Henry Cavill, Superman, with the Snyderverse, like, negativity attached to it? I don't know. Maybe it would be, you know, like, who knows? But um, the fact that, like, they ian fleming based james bond off of this guy and he played the guy that they based james you know what i'm saying it's kind of like a very Mm -hmm. interesting perspective you know it's very interesting how everything worked out well it's almost like it would show you his attempt like maybe it would be his attempt at an approach to it i wonder if there's i wonder if there's an interview out there where they asked him that you know there's a more specific answer to it well, I mean, the movie, the this movie did a good job of like flirting that line of being, because it was an absurd flick, but it it didn't go full Guy Ritchie, but there were moments when it went. You know what I'm saying? Like it was little oh, Ritchie. Yeah. Think, <laughs> oh yeah. This movie 100 percent Guy Ritchie watched Inglorious Bastards and was like, I'm gonna make a whole movie just about Brad Pitt's. Part. It did kind of have that feel. Yeah, the action yeah. scenes. Yeah, it was very like the action sequences was very over the top, and then like just their their whole nonchalantness. Well, the fact that they were happening. very much gentlemanly to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of my favorites. One of my favorite scenes is when they um they link up with that the 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 guy off the coast, and they're and uh, it's him and Cavill, and the, the, they're both talking and. Uh, they're just being as proper to one another as, as, as you could imagine people from that time period being. And they're like, we're going to need a few more chaps, you know? And the guy's like, Oh, we've got lads. And they all just come walking out and they're like, Oh, he goes, well, we've got, we've got weaponry on the, on, out here. You can help yourselves to it. And they're like, no chaps. We'll be fine. We have quite the weaponry ourselves. And they just start pulling tarps off and they're just armed to the fucking teeth. Yeah. Dude was even like, like it's on me. Yeah. And they're trying to pay him. He's like, here you go. We got some money for it. He's like, nah, it's on the house. 
Yeah. That was, All these fucks out of I, here. But just the contrast between how they just were no nonchalant and then, you know, they're like, yeah, we'll, we're fucking about it. Let's let's do it. Yeah. It was a, it was a fun little fl- flick, though. I'd like to see them do a sequel because at the end of it, you know, we see a little bit of information on their, their escapades and everything. I would like to see them follow it up, same cast, you know, and all that good stuff. I think it would be fun to revisit these these characters, you know? Um, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I had I enjoyed this Guy Ritchie. I haven't enjoyed a Guy Ritchie film. Here you like go. this. <laughs> the snatch. The gentleman and they. Well, the gentleman's good. Oh, go but... ahead, shit all over. <laughs> no, no. Have you seen the Covenant? Have you seen, by the way, his name is Doggy. Oh, yeah. His name is Doggy. Yeah, his I've seen that. Doggy. He's Doggy. Uh, Do it for Dobby. I mean, Doggy, you know. Um, better than Sherlock Holmes? I'm just kidding. Definitely better than Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Gentleman was pretty good. Yeah. No, it's not, the, it's not that his other films were bad. But I enjoyed... I enjoyed this one, and I think it's because, and don't this. I'm not throwing shade, but I'm glad it's. I'm glad it wasn't a heist movie. I mean, it kind of was. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, no, it no, into no. A heist, but they stole a bow. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Like, don't get me wrong. Guy Ritchie was like, gotcha. Yeah. You know. But for the most part, I felt like there was never that thing where it's like, all right. You're gonna go over that. You're gonna do this. You you're gonna over do that. And they kind of did it, but it wasn't like I mean, the last like twenty minutes was. It wasn't in that same flair. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, in this one they had to use a flashlight to send signals. Like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoyed it more than some than a lot of the other ones. Well, I got some bad news about a sequel. Oh, I know it ain't happening. The budget was sixty million. I'm starting to learn that I think I enjoy. I enjoy more horrible films of Hollywood than the good ones. I I guess, or just my interest in just just differs. I guess I don't know. But that was just the box office. Yeah, it got good ratings. Yeah, I mean, people just don't go to the fucking theater anymore, man. Yeah. Well, Deadpool's and, and, not out yet, you know? Yeah. And also, it's like, you know, the trailer did a decent job at selling it, but if you're not if you're not in the Guy Ritchie ecosystem, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, you kind of don't really know what to expect. So if you do go watch this expecting like a straight, a straight World War II flick, you're not getting that. If you're going into this expecting a flat-out comedy you know, war flick, you're not getting that either. It flirt, you know, it does a good job at flirting that guy Richie slash like somewhat serious tone. And I don't, it appeals to the people that are oh. fans of Guy Richie, but I don't think it appeals to the overall like film going community. You know what I mean? Well, I guess it's a, well, that's the thing. It's, it's a very accessible film. Like, yeah. I think it, it, as For far sure. as, I feel like it's a movie where you're like, okay, you like that movie? All right, let's fucking start like dialing violence? the clock you back like action? Let's, let's introduce you to some old Richie movies, you know? Yeah. I think it's a good entry point now for, for a lot of the, the younger audiences to get into his style of filmmaking. We've come full circle here. The bad guy was Sergeant Hugo Sticklitz. Yeah. Which is Sorry. crazy. Yeah. I mean, he, which in his older, you know, because he's definitely aged quite a bit since, you know. Oh, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He he really toned it down in this movie compared to a lot of the stuff I've seen him in. You know what I mean? Oh, but he still, but no, man, he he has that Vinnie, uh, Vinnie Jones. 
level of like he he, like, he looks like he's just on the brink of just yelling and ripping your fucking head off. Mhm. Like just that like that intimid like that verbal intimidation factor you're like dude I really don't want this motherfucker to be pissed to start talking to me. <laughs> right. It was nice to see old Princess Bride prop up again. Yeah, yeah. He's been in a mm-hmm. couple movies this year. He was in that uh, Operation like Fortune Cookie or something. The one with yeah. the one with Dougie in it. Operation Dumbo Drop? No. Uh, <laughs> Dude. I remember that movie. Whoa. <laughs> Operation Dumbo Drop. Good Lord. Tonight on Disney at 7 p.m. He was in Rebel Moon. How how's Bill Paxton gonna land this elephant in the jungle? <laughs> yeah, just Operation Fortune. He was good in that. He was good in this. Oh, Henry Cavill was just stealing everything. Yeah, no yeah, right. yeah it's like I'm taking this. He's like, I'll oh, do those jackets, dude. Yeah, then he I'll walks out in it. I like how he just like when they when they pull him into the into the room and you know the doing the whole like you're the only one you're the only man yeah. for the job you know I see. he's like. He's like, you can have me some tea if you want. He's like, fuck that tea. I'm pouring scotch. I'm lighting a cigar. Yeah. I'll take that jacket. To, yeah. Let me give let me give you the list yeah. of demands. You and know? my buddy's coming. Yeah. How many cigars <laughs> did he put in his pocket? Though? He grabbed them all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he, did. he just he put them in his pocket in. and then got another handful and stuck them on the other side. It was like Yeah. And it's the like, one guy was right. looking at the dude like he's riffraff, but yeah. Like, dude, yeah. I'd be doing the, I, I would have done the same. I'd be like, man, I probably ain't ever going to be in this room again. Yeah. He's like, y'all need me. So, what's up? Like, then he offered the, the match- soldiers. And then he was like, nah. Oh, psych. yeah. Well, he had it. Yeah. Hey, I what, liked his little about- mustache and his little witty. Uh, <laughs> frightfully. Yeah. So, so how'd y'all feel about the guy who was playing Churchill? In Terrible. The movie? <laughs> Terrible Churchill. Rory didn't even Hoover. look like him. That's the first thing I said when he was on screen. I was like, terrible Churchill. <laughs> the fucking the dude from Third Rock would have done a in the sea and then the sky is You could tell it was a stop. fat dude. That he was a, some dude wearing a, a suit and it just looked yeah. bad. You know who you need? You need Drexel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need Gary Oldman. Yeah, to right. channel the church. I mean, dude, this movie was the prequel to the A Team. Yeah, the guy Wait, that no. played played Churchill was the guy from Men, the cop. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was that guy. That was some makeup. Yeah. We was in our flag means death too. Seven episodes. Captain Nigel Badminton. But um, overall, I enjoyed it. I mean, here's the thing: like for Guy Ritchie's catalog, there's definitely a divide in his because you've got Lockstock, Snatch, mm. Revolver, Rock and Rolla. That those films are all kind of in their own area like you know it's own little universe yes well and, like then those, you... and, 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 those, and those are legit revolver mm-hmm. is like well god damn it now you got me a hypocrite tonight griffin <laughs> revolver is is one of his best movies yeah. if not in that whole realm of this gonna be quirky quick dialogue do you get the fucking pulse no because your hand isn't on your wrist like you know that type of shit you know yeah. Like Revolver's and, definitely up there. And that twist, yeah. the twist at Revolver is what makes that movie. Yeah, yeah. And I would definitely put uh the the gentleman in that group. But then you have like the Sherlock Holmes movies, you've got King Arthur, Aladdin. You That's know, the Hollywood he went Hollywood, he, you know. Yeah. Time to get yeah. paid and then I'll and get to make one. But for see, me. here's my I know you guys keep pushing the gentleman and it's a good movie. But can we be honest here? You're not watching The Gentleman for Guy Ritchie. You're watching it for that fucking Tom Hardy performance. 
Is that, are Hardy we talking about that? the right movie? Or is, no, is it Charlie Hunnam? Yeah, it's Charlie Hunnam or Hunnam. It's got Matt Hunnam. McConaughey in it. I mean, come on, dude, McConaughey. Yeah, come on. But I mean, I would say that like the gentleman is leans more into the overtop nature of his writing and filmmaking style compared to, you know, a lot of a lot of other flicks that he's made. And then like this flirts that line because he did, you know, Operation Fortune, you know, Wrath of Man, um. The Covenant, like his war type stuff, yeah. I can vouch for that. But it was it well, was I mean, super serious, though, right? Like very well. It's actually based on some real shit. Like let's leave yeah. those translators behind and Afghanistan. Right? Yeah. I mean, Jumbo Drop was a good soft entry, but I mean, he really <laughs> amped up the tone. Yeah. So, and I would say that, like, looking at his, so we've got. The over the top guy Richie, we've got the money making guy Richie, and then we've got like the war guy Richie. The over the top definitely beats everything out, in my you know, in my opinion, because that's what you're there for. You know, it's yeah. like he's like oh, the I British mean, Tarantino. Yeah. You know, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here for unintelligible Didn't Brad he? Pitt performance. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, in comparison to the the rest of the movies in his filmography. It's it's good. It's not like it's not lock stock. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. not snatch. It's it's not it's not um revolver, but compared to a lot of the crap that Hollywood just pukes out, it's good. Well but it's it's the kind of movie though. It's good enough that if someone's like, Hey man, I checked it out the other day, thought it was pretty good, I haven't watched a lot of Guy Ritchie movies, that's when you go, Hey, Go watch Lockstock. Go yeah. watch Revolver. Go watch. Not Lockstock. really. Go a guy get your Richie mind movie. blown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did he write it? Well, it's based off of a book. Oh, so so there's so, the difference. Uh, yeah, that stuff was declassified. Yeah. You know, in 2016, and then a guy wrote a book about that, and then he tried to do his stylized adaptation of the of the book, which yeah. I mean, yeah. it worked out. You know pretty pretty successfully in my opinion because it was very stylized and very witty and quick and it just but it just wasn't like snatch witty yeah. and quick and like yeah but i enjoyed it though like i th- I thought it, it was a very fun experience but am i going to watch it again probably i mean yeah at some point i will but probably not in the next like you know two or three years but I would sit down and watch Lockstock right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. without without even batting an eye. You know. So that's kind of where I fall. Yeah, yeah. Like if it's only you come good. across it and you start watching it, you remember when you'd be flipping TV? It's like oh, yeah. And you oh, sit yeah, there and watch the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. If I'm in a hotel room and it's on HBO, I'll watch it. But, but that doesn't that doesn't take away the fact that I am going to give it a full star. I'm just saying in comparison to the rest of dude's filmography, it's hard to beat those first couple of flicks that he dropped, you know, like he, he really like leaned into his craft there and he was doing it for the love of the game. I mean, that was stuff that he wrote that he, that he directed that was passion of his. And then like, to me, whenever he took on the Sherlock and then Aladdin, yeah. it's like, really? Like, do we, what, really, Guy Ritchie? Like, you're doing your thing. That's like, like Tarantino. You were like the Tarantino. Now you're not, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you sold out, buddy. Sure, it paid well. Yeah. And I'm not saying that those movies are bad. I'm just saying they're not, they're not Guy Ritchie, though, you know? I think the only one I've seen is the Sherlock Holmes movie. I haven't, I haven't watched seen Aladdin. I went to the theater and watched both the Sherlock movies. I think I saw the first one in the theater. I don't know if I've seen the second. Was that the one where he's boxing at the beginning? No, that the was the first one. one. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I remember that. Yeah. The second one was, a, it was, meh. It wasn't as good. But it had RDJ in it. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Like right off the hills of Iron Man. Yeah. In a Guy Ritchie movie, it's like, bro. So. But yeah, I'm going to give it a full star. I did enjoy it. I thought Cavill's performance 
like the team was amazing. I could have used more scenes of the team just like hanging out. You know what I mean? And just like, Mm -hmm. you know, dicking around like that would have been fun, but you know, we got what we, it kept having to swap back to the Island with the chick infiltrating everything. And it's like, yeah, that's interesting, but like, it's it not slowing as it down. Yeah. It's not as fun as like watching these guys that are just like absolutely insane. Almost, insane. you know, trying to come up with crazy ways to like steal a ship, you know? Oh yeah. The cold opening where they're, they're out on the boat. The, they're boarded and by the, Nazis the uh, mm-hmm. I like that. Well, I mean little, like, I know it sounds weird, but it was little shit where it was like, while they were talking to to Reacher's character, you know, yeah, sure. that 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 the way they paced that scene, where like he kept kind of putting his hand on that general, and that dude's like, "Don't fucking touch me, man! Like yeah. I don't like that shit." And then like, you know, finally they point at Henry Cavill's character. They all start laughing. They look at the table, and you see like wine and cheese, and you're like, "Ah, uh, yeah, they're yeah. playing like they're drunk," you know, like yeah. Like whenever they're pointing at uh at Henry Cavill when Rachel's character starts going, You better not a boy now <laughs> <laughs> And then he just proceeds to just, I don't know, stab him like eight fucking times you in really like, like to stab five people. seconds. Yeah. That five scene with him on that ship was awesome. Yeah, it was where the yeah. people were behind the door. Yeah. He's just fucking yeah. everybody up and they open the door like, You trying to get in here? Cool. <laughs> yeah. He's just looking at him like, yeah, like, yeah. He's like, yeah, what's up, dude? Well, we're also when um when they're doing recon, and those Germans walk up on them, and then they just you just hear the <laughs> and they fucking hit the ground. Dude's like, where'd the arrows go? And that dude points up, and they're sticking above them. Yeah. Like, and then that guy just walks up, and he's like, hey, what's going on, guys? Just you know, stoking the perimeter. Uh, yeah, I thought it was so funny when they were on the island and they were like scoping it out and that patrol walks up and he takes them up, takes them out and then Cavill's character turns around and he goes, what have you done? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> well, they, they were here, you know, we had to take care of them. But enjoyed it. I'm going to go half star because the first hour was kind of slow. It did take a little bit of time to get, get it going. Yeah. Like you have that one big thing at the beginning and then it was like, all right. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, we get into it. We get into it. When it then they, by the third act, they picked their buddy up. Yeah. Then it's bouncing back to the island with a chick. It's like, I really don't care about any of this. Yeah. Right. Like, and they didn't even raise the stakes. I'm like, really? She survived? Yeah, for real, right? I'm like, come on. When they carried her back down that room, though, I was like, mm. yeah, yeah. He's like, put her in the shackles. I'm like, what weird sex dungeon yeah. stuff? Is, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. what? Um, I have to kind of agree with Adam. Um, Initially, I was a full star. Like after, like when I was right off of watching it last week, I was like, "Man, I was chewing on all of it." Like how, how you know, it was a good. It is a good time, but because of pacing issues, like what you guys brought up and everything, um, I'm just gonna go with a half though. I think it's absolutely a solid two star film though. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it was it was fun. It's just, it's not lock stock. It's not, you know. And when and you we slap probably, Guy Ritchie on something, you kind of expect. Yeah. There's a certain, there's a certain level of expectation there. Yeah. Isn't it? So, yeah. Isn't it? Where, yeah. Where was, where was fucking Statham at? Was he not available? I, I mean, they got uh, the big dude. Uh, he would have ruined, dude, he would have ruined that. Been movie. too much for it. Yeah. He, he would have ruined it. I wonder if he, I wonder if the Swede was originally him. Like, like, you know, like when, like when Richie was accent. writing it. Yeah. Or, like, yeah, like whenever like, Richie nah, was writing me. it. Like, yeah. It's not for me. But I think the casting was fucking great, though. Like, yeah. every char- every character, like, like whenever 
when one of the group was on screen, I didn't feel like, all right, man, let's get back to this other dude. Like, this shit's boring. Yeah. Like, everyone was interesting. Um, even, even, even the girl straight up being cold blooded as fuck and popping one right between that dude's got like the thing about it is like hers was such a slow burn that yeah. editing it the way that they did with the just the absurdity of the guys just blowing shit up fucking just bowing everyone down and all that it it was almost like you know it's like someone driving stick shit for the first time like well, you know? another thing yeah and another thing too is like the guy that they got to play you know the the guy that played stiglitz like yeah he's got that whole demeanor where at any moment he could flip out and just rip somebody's throat out but he's such a likable guy very nice. yeah like in yeah. every role that he Nazi. plays yeah in but every role he plays it, he's such a likable he is person well like and here's something too like and it, and it makes the like, it makes the Nazi trope not feel like the. St- it kind of takes the stakes out of, oh shit, Nazis are on screen, and it's the the old fucking cliche that you see where like, every Nazi is a complete fucking dipshit except for the one guy that's got the scent of a bloodhound, on sniffing out every Jew in a room. You know, yeah. like, it's like he has the, the third like sense. <laughs> and and I don't know. It just it, it 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 didn't make me feel intimidated by it or not. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's what those scenes are supposed to do. Supposed to build tension, make you be like, oh fuck, this dude ain't fucking around. Instead, it's like, oh okay, it's about eight fucking dipshits and one guy with just a little bit of a functioning brain cell yeah, that already knows end, why. Even his here. ass was fucking stupid. Yeah. Like he just died like. It's a throwaway oh, yeah. death. Like, I was like, well, he really went that from, easy? He went from being like heavily secured where it's like, you're going to have to have like, you're going to have to pass a lot of people to get an audience with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's just walking out free and, you know, chick's like, yeah, by the way. I'll tell you why Statham it's... wasn't in it. Because he released four movies last year. Oh, yeah. The Beekeeper. Well, that <laughs> came out this year, but it was The Expendables oh. 4, Meg 2, yeah. Fast oh, X, the, and Operation the, Fortune the all came out in 2023. Like, That's he's like, I got here. a lot. He's cooking a lot, you know? So, yeah. He's doing a lot the of dishes right in, now. Yeah. A lot of arms in the fire. A lot of irons in the fire. Yeah. He had to do Meg 2. Yeah. We got to punch the shark. Yeah. Anybody's <laughs> fucking nose. Yeah, I think he's long past due to to have like his, to have the psycho role, to see like to test his range. Like, can Jason Statham play a legitimate crazy person? Like he goes full. I'm not saying. Well, I'm not saying Oscar level crazy. Okay, not Tom Hardy, but. But like, play it to a degree where you're like, holy shit! Like, I didn't know, I didn't know he had it in him. He was yeah. kind of like that in The Beekeeper. Did you watch that? I watched a little he bit He didn't of talk it. a lot. He wasn't witty. He was just like, I'm going to fuck these people up. Yeah. Stay from Stay in money. <laughs> Jason, stay from But at this you point, man, star. he just does the big action. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, movies that's going to get a quick return. Yeah, big payday. Yeah. Probably not going to lose any money, you know? <clears throat> I wish that I could get him as my navigator on my phone. Oh, Ray you got to turn left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told you to turn left, you fucking wallop. Like, yeah. yeah. That's what I want. That's what I want course. more than anything. Or sweat, of course, set to quickest route. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're like, what? Yeah. It's an accident. Stay in the middle John line. Mayne. <laughs> Where'd you left? <laughs> Take the roundabout. There's no roundabout here. We don't Take have the those. <laughs> so the acolyte. Everybody watched it. Yeah. Oh. All right. Episode one. 
I believe it was called uh, OSHA violation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, was it. Yeah. Oh, All of this should have been one episode and it still wouldn't have been enough. Yeah. To right. be the kickoff. It was like, it was slow and just like, okay, yep, that's your sister. You're my sister. Yeah. Well, it's just, there's, that, there's it's no like stakes, everything. Man. Well, something I was telling Griffin, it's like every everything built up to everyone just looking depressed or just staring off camera. The coolest yeah. thing was her little droid, little pocket droid. Oh, yeah. man. I was like, that's cool. Really? To have one that small that you can carry around with you? That was something I was telling Griff, too. I was like, why, why, have, they had, why have they made this whole thing where it's like, you got a Force user... Jedi, whatever, and it's like, oh, you got the, you got your droid that, the, the little sassy droid that talks back to you, you know? Yeah, well, that's definitely going to be a toy. Small oh, yeah, enough, I mean, you know, it'll make all yeah. the sounds you'll build a, I don't, you won't build a weld with it, but the first thing <laughs> we got to point out is the fire in space. Oh my God. Yeah. I heard about this online, but when I saw it, I was like, yep, they're in space, and that thing's, the fire's cracking and popping, and yeah, the winds moving, and I'm like, I don't know if that would work that way. I'm pretty sure it yeah. wouldn't, but you know, maybe y'all got well, some, something I don't know. You said that the, the head of that droid, though, I know I'm backing this up a second, but like the head of that droid also served as a sonic screwdriver. Yep. They did all kinds of shit. Yeah. But I thought I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, neat little design, you know. They'll sell yeah, it as a toy. It, it looked like a little wally. Can, can it carry the one though? I mean, so they, they definitely did some fuckery here, right? They separated these girls, right? Because yeah, it seems well, like they know her. Yeah. Here's what, all right, me me and Trav was talking about this right before you got on. <clears throat> they, they royally, all right, first of all, the writing for this show is dog shit, okay? I just want to go ahead and just say that right out of the bad. gate. Be because... The thing that would have made this show really, really cool and interesting and would have like made me super excited to watch it was if the twins could sell identity. Well, if they were the same person and she had DID. Okay. And one of them was a for you know, a light side force user, and one yeah. of them was a dark side force user. And it's like the different personalities have, you know, and it be this thing where it's like it's a war within herself. Yeah. You know, they're, they're keeping the person around them that is eventually supposed to try to assassinate the main character, but no, like but in her. the first step. Yeah. But in the first episode, it's like, no, nope, we're just going to have it be two different people yeah. and they're, they're twins. And I, honestly, whatever they reveal about why these characters were separated and what, what weirdness went into that, what tomfoolery goes into that is not going to make up for how great that story would have been if they would have taken that approach. It's, it's well, very, it better. it's True, very but, lazy writing. It is. But if like, we're going to play in that, then at least conceal the identity for a big reveal. Exactly. It's her sister, you know, not in the first if, episode. If, now the thing with the sister is if, if we're left to play with the toys in the sandbox we've been given, um, the thing that would be interesting is if they found a way that the Jedi saw that her and the twin were one of those very rare instances where they become a dyad in the Force, like the whole concept between Rey and Kylo at the end of uh, Rise of Skywalker. I know I'm jumping from one shitty written no, I see what you mean. show to a shitty written movie. You got movie, one good, one bad, they come together. But they branch and yeah. mooch off the same piece of the force. Yeah. Well, if they and work it together, would be, it's like super weapon. Like, Yeah, and so the Jedi were like, uh, gotta, gotta keep separate them separated. Them. Yep. I mean, we if really? they do something like that, then that would be interesting, but like, dude... I just you you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it was but but it's like it's it's like I was saying, Griff, before we started the before before we were recording and everything, man. Uh, I was saying earlier, Adam, that like 
they've Disney Star Wars has put itself in this weird gray area where there is absolutely stuff that takes place hundreds, if not thousands of years before the Skywalker saga. Yeah. But it's been disregarded in the Disney purchase. So now they're in this position where they're having to do just so much ass pulling. And I feel like fucking with the past, like past continuity that's already established where you have such a foundation laid, whether shit goes back thousands of years and yada, yada, yada. I feel like it's safer, and a lot of other shows do this, where if you want to remove yourself from immediate canon so you're not bound to plot lines over, you know, all that shit, you put yourself so far flung in the future that all that stuff happened that you can just be like, all right, here's the next new adventure, whatever. But when you do it on the opposite end, though, and you're dealing with stuff that, that, that becomes part of that foundation that the franchise is built on. I'm not saying they've necessarily done anything wrong yet, well, but I feel like that becomes a slippery slope for so many I mean, people. George that Lucas did stuff. it. When I mean, he made he did. the, you know what I mean? But then that's different. But yeah. And, and it sounds really trite to say it, but it's almost like I see where George you're coming Lucas, from. with George Lucas, it's kind of the concept of playing baseball in the backyard. But for some reason, he decided to make gets the prequels. House. And now yeah. this is, what, 100 years before that, mm-hmm. which could, you know, it's got the potential to be cool because it's like, oh, this is some shit. This has got nothing to do with Skywalker. It yeah. has nothing to do, you know, but it's like, but it, this is what we get, you know? Okay. Now, I'm more excited about the Wookiee with the man bun yeah, right. than I am anything else. Like, And I think the next episode is going to be about that. I think that came out today. or Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. But uh, ah, that was just a bad start. Bad yeah. start. Well, and and the same thing happened with Andor to an extent too. Well, it's like you know, it took it took a couple episodes to like get into the motion of what what's going on there. But like this is like okay, we've got eight episodes. The first two episodes dropped. There's four targets that need to be assassinated. Two of them are already gone. We already know who the other two are. We're assuming that she's going after the Wookiee next. So it's like, so if she takes everybody out except for the guy from Squid Games. Now, why wouldn't it be him? He would be another target, right? He is so the they, third, Okay, the, he's the other one? Yeah, he's the, yeah. Okay. And well, so it's Oh, like, yeah, I'll, that's why she yeah. was trying to kill him with no weapon. So, but really, yeah. we're going to take Trinity out first 10 minutes? Oh, I know. Dude. Trinity? And I would still argue that was That's the best action sequence of, of the show so far. Yeah. He was whipping her ass. Well well the way I was well the way I was watching it was like, dude, they're they're hitting all the check marks and stuff about Jedi and stuff, like the whole pacifist stuff thing, yeah. like but you know, they, they start doing that, that, that morally gray shit where they're like, Yeah, but you have struck people down before and blah 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 blah. Any deals now? On the one safe? thing, one thing I do like that helmet looks familiar. I do like the idea that um, the whole thing with an acolyte is they're like, dude, I don't fuck with lightsabers. Like I kill with real shit, like my hands, the force, fucking whatever the fuck I get my goddamn hands on, you know? Yeah. So she doesn't even know who her master is. That's the way they made it. Because it's like he stands on rocks, you know, like 30 feet away and looks back over <laughs> yeah. his shoulder like Tyler. Yeah. yeah. Stay Did away. You do it? Yeah. I mean, there's some reason, though, that, that they would want to be separate. You know, maybe that's some Jedi, you know. Well, I'm wondering maybe if that's we're a good guy see... that's not taken out competition on their end you know what i mean like well the thing well one of the one of the concepts of uh the sith is that or it's a common thing is there's always a master there's always an apprentice but the concept of the apprentice is to is to strike down the master 
by getting a secret apprentice to take his, you know what I mean? To repeat mm-hmm. the cycle. But even though it's called the rule of two, two, you essentially need three people. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering if like that whole concept is because he's serving someone else. Yeah. And he's priming her to be like, yo, we're about to kill this motherfucker. You're going to be, yeah. you're going to be my apprentice. I'm going to be the master and we're going to rule this shit. Yeah, I'm 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 interested to see where they go with it, but so far it's just been I wouldn't say it's necessarily been a letdown because my expectations weren't like super high for the yeah. series going into it. Um especially with a lot of the uh interviews and things from the mm-hmm. writers and and actors and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, "Oh, so it's the Star Wars thing that's just not Well, I was hoping we were going to get that opening shot with Osha and whatever Carrie Ann Moss's name is in the show. Um, they fight. They say some vague shit to each other. And then we pick up with Carrie Ann Moss being like, okay. Because, you know, she she made a point. You saw her on screen to be like, yo, we've got a unidentified force user. Yeah. Um, a UFU, I guess. Hmm. A UFO. Yeah. A, a, we got ourselves a UFO. Um, but no, I was expecting like that to be the story. Like we're following her being like, hey, some shit's going on. People don't believe her. Like, the, you know, kind of kind of a, a repeat of how the Phantom Menace starts. Yeah. Where, you know, Qui Gon and Obi Wan's like, dude, there's some shit going on, but the Jedi Council's like, eh, no, the fuck they ain't. Yeah. And it's wild to me, like, legitimately wild to me that they could pull legacy characters into it, but they're just like, nah. Mm hmm. We're good. My biggest thing was like, dude, he doesn't even have to be a main character, but when they go into the, the, the room, where the the the, the child the younglings are training, yeah. That whole lecture, or that whole lecture, I'm sitting there thinking, dude, they totally could have used a young Yoda in this moment, and that would have been fucking awesome. Instead of that other little creature they had set there, whatever the fuck, yeah. when it was well, like close your eyes. No, well, like, no. Mm-hmm. Instead of the instead of the yeah, instead of the teacher being you know that guy, instead it just be Yoda being like. You know, doing his shit like little shit. You all are <laughs> weak in the force right now. Green but, whales, but the green thing is, women. But the thing with the thing with Yoda is he's so fucking old. It's like he could be a linchpin to some of the like some of that stuff because there's so much of Yoda's history that's left up in the air that they could write him into this show and a lot of people would go, okay, Yoda was doing shit. It's just part of his lifespan as a Jedi. Yeah. Well, what the fuck was Torben so turned up about that he didn't talk for 10 years and fucking killed himself and was sorry? Well, it was whatever they did on That's that what I'm planet. saying. Like, something happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure, like... <sighs> It's going to be something that is just going to be so absurdly dumb, I feel. Just Some because sort of, of the dishonor crap. Well, I think but just because of like how the 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 show has gone so far and how it's being written and who's writing it, it's going to be some weird stupid like social like attempt at some type of social commentary thing that's just going to fall flat because of like these are space wizards. You know what I'm saying? With a code that they're trying to uphold. Like, it's going to go, like, I feel that it's going to go against, like, what the the quote-unquote Jedi are. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, well, like, it seems like there's this hard pivot where it's like, don't follow perfect ideals or what, you know what I mean? Like, embrace the moral ambiguity of the world because that's how the world really is. And it's like, no, it's not. That's a select population of the world. Don't give a fuck. 
they're called criminals. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, not but, every not every story has to have this either Robin Hood or misunderstood villain approach because you can go back and find it in so many interviews where George Lucas clearly goes like there's good there's evil there's the Jedi they're the good guys like he 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 did concept art with the con like with psychology in mind like we're gonna make the bad guys look bad so that children interpret them as the evil like like they can show up on screen just like in a play and you already know all right that's the bad guy yeah well and the th and also the thing too is like if a jedi does something out of pocket they either do one of two things is should happen right they either turn bad right they go full dooku with it or they like are imprisoned or whatever. You know, we haven't really technically seen that side, but the Jedi Council takes care of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it's like, okay, is this person that, you know, this cloaked figure that's standing on rocks hanging out, is this someone that was there and was involved in everything? And if so, like, are they going full Jedi or full Sith because of like whatever's happened? Do you see and the if picture so, I dropped of them? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that's a male. Just from the yeah. size of the purse and the shoulders. Right. If you look at the head and then look at the rest of the body, which whoever it is is short. I mean, it could be the, the dude that was like, Anakin blew up the Death Star. It could be that, that individual. Because he's kind of like the comic relief, like, yeah. well, you know. But my, anyway. thing with it, my thing is that with this show, I really would like for there to be a a good storyline from the perspective of the dark side. Mhm. Mm yeah. Because ultimately the dark side can carry those misunderstood archetypes. Yes. If if written properly. Yeah. But you always have to you always have to make sure that the fact that they have succumbed to the dark side that they are evil. They even make a point to just do that. You get that scene in Obi Wan, where where we get that badass shot of uh, Vader where his helmet split, and he's like, you know, you didn't, you know, you didn't kill me, man. I killed my fucking self. Like yeah. I'm fucking Vader. Like don't get it twisted. I fucking hate you. You know that type of shit. Yeah. And and so. It just—I don't know. It could be. It could. It could be better, but it could be so much worse. But it, it's you know it's it, it sucks because it's in that still in the too soon to tell. Yeah. But well. the the sins it's already committed are pretty just blatantly stupid. Yeah. Wonder. Well, and it's really the, just front. The it, creator it's, it's of really the just... show did like The Bachelor before the. All these has, I mean, it's just some like un. There's some uncharted territory for her. You can tell, the creator, uh, The Bachelorette, single drunk female. These are all TV shows. Yeah. Wait, and this is who's doing the act a lot. Yes. Yes. Whoa. The writer, director, like showrunner, creator, it and says. You, yes, and you can definitely tell that it's a very, I wouldn't say inexperienced, but just like, I don't think that they fully understand that, like, if we're going to go back, even though it's not far into the past, but it's far enough back into the past that, like, if you change the the precedent of wh how things work, then that causes everything that's been made so far to crumble under its own weight. It's, I mean, this almost seems like its own purpose. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like uh, Kathleen Kennedy saw that episode of South Park and was like, fuck these motherfuckers, burn it down. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like, I'm going to, of course, hold, you know, full judgment for it since, uh, since the entire show hasn't been released, but like just based off of the, 
um, two episodes that we've got so far that we've watched, it's like when I was watching it, I'm just like, I'm ready for this to be over. Yeah. You know what I mean? The landing gear's fucking up on takeoff. Yeah. Might have to make um, an emergency landing. Yeah. And like, you know, I like the dude from Squid Games. Yeah. You know? I I like a lot of the the actors that are in it. I like a lot of the uh you know, it's gonna be cool to see a Wookiee Jedi. Yeah. But like we've we've seen the character once in the next episode, they could cold open kill that character and be like, Oh, so one of the most interesting things about your show is gone in an instant. Just like the Trinity thing, you know? So I don't I don't know, man. We'll we'll see how it all shakes out in the wash, but like I'm just not impressed right now. That's that's kind of how I feel about well, it. I'm not them, excited. That's a you problem. I yeah, I know, and it's the I don't show like is that made... attitude from them. Like they're so angry the sh- that the yeah the ratings are bad, and it's like I mean you made you made it. Yeah, what do you think was going to happen? Well, the the show wasn't made for me. It was made to enrage me. Um. But is that what, like, Disney, let's be honest, is that what we're defaulting to? You want to upset your community to the point where they watch the show just to complain about it instead of watching the show to enjoy the thing that they've grow, grown up watching? Like, why are we doing, why? Why are yeah. we doing this? Good luck selling tickets to that fucking theme park. Exactly, right? Yeah. To that little, where you build your own lightsaber? Mm-hmm. Good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, because you know who does stuff like that? The same people that you're trying to piss off. As they spend thousands of dollars. Yeah. So a lifetime on Star Wars. Yeah. So like I said, the you know, the the Andor turnaround for me, you know, there's been a couple of the uh Star Wars series that, you know, like uh that it came out and that at first was just like, I don't know about this. And then that got better with, you know, as the episodes kept coming out, I'm hoping that this does the same, but I'm my expectations for everything is still very low. Especially whenever you constantly see stuff on Twitter Mm. and on like news sources, that's just like, no, we want you to hate this. We don't want you to enjoy this. We don't want you like, and it's like, Okay, well, like... The the main girl said the goal was to make white people cry. Yeah, right. She said that. I'm not just making that up, and it's like, why would you even say that? Like, that's weird to say. Like, if I said that and it was the other way around, oh, fuck, I mean, you know? Yeah, exactly, right? So, I don't know. It's, It's just a weird... It's a weird stance on everything. Well, it's like, don't get your butt hurt. And they can't always go back to the whole, well, uh, these these Star Wars fans, like, they just don't like stuff with women in it. Princess Leia was in the, I mean. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah. Ahsoka. I mean, it's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all about the writing, the story. Yeah. So. I'm going to hold full judgment, but right now I'm just not super, super impressed with what we've got. Yeah, for sure. But, you know. But, yeah, we got a little bit of movie news here, though, if y'all want to, you know, peep this thing. So Hellraiser reboot star shares intriguing update on potential sequel. So... Uh, 2022's Hellraiser, who original was a commendable reboot of the Clive Barker IP and a new word from lead star Odessa Azayan seems to indicate that more blood, more chains, and more pinhead could be on the way. Azayan, I guess that's how you pronounce that, Azian, Azayan, was interviewed by Screen Rant for her role in the forthcoming crime drama Fresh Kills, during which she was asked for an update on a potential sequel. Uh, as is typical... 
typically the case for stars of franchise films. She had to remain silent or relatively tight-lipped. Um, so this was the quote, Oh God, I'm going to get in so much trouble if I talk about anything. I've heard things here and there, nothing ever official, and I don't think it's ever, ever going to be official, but also you never know. You never know. Certainly not a direct confirmation of momentum for the sequel, but it does come at the hills of an even more inspiring update from producer Keith Levine. The film's producer had teased that the sequel would be even crazier and even more awesome, which implies that the sequel script had been outlined at the very least. It's not surprising that there have been some degree of talks regarding the Pinhead follow-up. 2022 reboot did moderately well on Hulu ratings-wise and was only the second of the 11 installment franchise to score a fresh Rotten Tomatoes rating. I mean, fun. I'm... I, I had a great time with it. The, well, the, 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 yeah. I mean, audience with God, y'all. Yeah, right. So, uh, hopefully they'll do it. I mean, good ratings, good mm -hmm. viewership on Hulu. Why not do it, you know? And I thought that Pinhead, the, the you know, Jamie Clayton, mm -hmm. did a pretty great job as yeah. Pinhead. So, I mean, let's do it. Let's make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I'd be down for that. Like, out of all the things that's been like rebooted or whatever, it's been one of the better ones. That like and it Prey. And, yeah, that Prey. And I would put Halloween. Yeah. Even though it was like a legacy sequel. But like those two put, coming from Hulu, it's like, okay, you're doing something good. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. See, that's what happens when you get people that like really care about yeah. properties. You know what I'm saying? Like fans. That's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. People that live in the in the world and live in the lore, and mm -hmm. they are like, "Oh, I get the opportunity to work on one of my favorite things in the world instead of like single white female or whatever." Well, the hell and it they is. even did this. They were like, "Look, lead role for Hellraiser, got to be a woman," and they were like, "Okay, that's fine." Yeah, because I got a good fucking story. Yeah, does it matter? What's crazy? What's crazy is is the, like just how well Clayton went into that role because like. It's crazy how she looks. Cause she is a gorgeous woman, guys. Like yeah. for real. Fun well, fact. We'll... Yeah, she's a big Pinhead <laughs> fan. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, you know, her Pinhead cosplay is sick. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get some Hellraiser two uh, action in the future. That'd be phenomenal. You know. So Train to Busan director sets his first English language horror film. So Train to Busan director Jan Sang Ho has sealed a deal with TriStar Pictures to direct his first English language horror film. Uh, released in 2016, Train to Busan will go on to become a global hit, earning a massive $98.5 million worldwide against a budget of just $8 million. The zombie action horror flick is regarded as one of the best in the genre, often lauded for its emotional story of a father and his estranged daughter trapped on a train during a zombie outbreak in South Korea. As per deadline, Sang Ho's first English language horror film will be titled 35th Street. While plot details remain under wraps for now, it is being described as another action horror movie, something the director has become known for. He'll team up with Ryu Yong Jae to pin the script as the two are no strangers to one another and have previously collaborated on Train to Busan's sequel, Peninsula and the 2024 Netflix hit Parasite the Grey. Casting details for 35th Street have yet to be revealed as the project is still in early stages of development at TriStar. Release date has also yet to be set, but the movie will be produced by both Appian Wei and Wow Point, who had a hand in producing Sanko's previous Netflix projects, The Bequeath. And Parasite the Grey, which is a live-action spinoff of the popular manga series. I mean, Train to Busan, I mean, I, I mean, I think it got a golden reel, right, when we watched it? So, um, I'm interested to see his first English-language flick. Could be a, it could become a trend here. Could and get I'm glad more. they were like, Remake Train to Busan. 
put it in English. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm excited. And it's cool whenever you see, you know, foreign directors. Yeah. Break through. Yes. They drop something that gains enough popularity in the West to kind of come over and do Parasite, their own. Triple R. Yes. Yeah. So that's awesome. That, that, that's awesome that that's happening. So good luck to, uh, Mr. Sang Ho. And I hope everything turns out well. So Kevin Smith loses his major battle with MPA over the rating of his next movie, the 430 movie. Um, so the 430 movie, uh, Smith shot uh, to fame in the 90s. We already know all that. Uh, the 430 movie was given an R rating by the MPA, a decision which Smith has already appealed. However, Smith has already appealed the decision and he revealed on the inside of you podcast with Michael Rosenbaum that he lost the appeal. They gave us an R rating on the move on a movie that I intended to be PG 13. Smith said the actor director revealed that before the interview, he had come from an appeals hearing for the film's rating. Smith argued that his long history of producing R rated films means he knows exactly what he can and can't include. This is what he had to say. My argument for the appeal was very much that I was like, there's three things I know how to do in this world. I can play foosball really well. I know how to walk two German shepherds on a tandem leash, and I know how to make an R-rated movie. I said, so I said, so I know not how to make an R-rated movie as well. That's why I intended to make a PG-13 movie with this. The fact that you guys made it R means that this sweet little peon to youth about 16 year olds in 1986 who hop from one theater to another who yes, make a lot of sex jokes, but no more uh, than any other teen movie is the equivalent to the human centipede. How on earth are these two movies in the same category? Uh, according to Smith, the MPA were caught up over his use of pervasive innuendo. And that is why the film was awarded an R rating. Smith said, they just said, yeah, but it was just, like a lot of innuendo. But I was like, yeah, of course. But there's no more innuendo than in the average like 8 p.m. sitcom. They were kind of Im admitting too. They're like, well, yeah, there's soft R's, there's hard R's, and you're right. We had a we had a hard time coming up with a rating on this, and they were also not 100% committed to it. I mean, cut, cut. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's... <laughs> I'm sure he was editing the flick as they were shooting it, you yeah. know? So just like edit 10 minutes of innuendo out and then release an R rated cut if you have to, or an un, you know, yeah. an unrated version of it. But, well, you know, it's going to be dialogue heavy. And a oh, lot yeah, of that's sure. going to be, you know, and, and they ain't never liked him. No, not really. I mean, he going to win that battle. No. Like when you just hear Kevin Smith, you're like, oh, PG 13? No. Yeah, yeah. And that may have more to do with it than yeah. the actual content of the movie. Yeah. It's like, it's like Tarantino making a PG-13 movie. You think he could get yeah, a... Like, it was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So I was thinking for my next fucking project, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, all right, Tarantino, calm down. Um. But yeah, that's wild. But I mean, at the end of the day, who cares? Let like, it fly, dude. The people that are going to watch this They're movie watch it. Yeah. are going to be Kevin Smith fans. Like, I don't yep. like, do you see this movie getting released in theaters and having any no. type of like theater presence? Well, young and being youth successful? following yeah. like, no. Yeah, exactly. Right. Kinda like so, the other one he tried to make the one with the sausages. Like, yeah. Or yoga hosers. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. It went nowhere with that. Yeah. I mean, and that's what he was aiming for. Like, yeah. You don't, those movies don't happen anymore. There ain't no fucking. Yeah. Uh, the Bears movie. Uh, bad News Bears. There's no Bad News Bears movies. There's no meatballs. Yeah. You know? No. And it's like, how is, because like this is his throwback. It's weird because like the movie's going to take place in the 80s, right? I think but, so. Like late 80s, early 90s. 
Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like so that's what he's going for, that kind of style that Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, if it was like more of a I don't know, maybe if it was more of like a an homage to that type of film. Yeah. You know, because it crept up into the early two thousands, you know, American Pie and all that kind of stuff, yep. you know. So um maybe if he was going for that and trying to be do more of a satire approach to it, um they might be a little bit more generous with it. I don't know. I haven't watched it, of course, but like I'm Set interested. In the summer of eighty six. Yeah. So But don't cut out all the good jokes. Exactly, to, right? You know, fuck your movie up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like every time he puts a movie out, he has to dispute the battle. NPA. Yeah, yeah. So, whatever. I just want Moose Jaws. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, let's make that happen. So. Rebel Moon. So, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon director cut sets August release with two new titles. So, fans who have been anticipating the release of the director's cut of Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon saga won't have to wait too much longer as both chapters are set to release on Netflix with entirely new names on August the 2nd, 2024. Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire, was originally released on December the 15th, followed by Part 2, The Scar Giver, this past April. While the films have been subject of much debate, both chapters quickly rose to the top of Netflix charts despite the negativity surrounding them. As per Variety, the new director's cuts will be called Rebel Moon Chapter 1, Chalice of Blood, and Rebel Moon Chapter 2, Curse of Forgiveness. The R-rated entries are being described as viciously sexier and bloodier versions of the originals. Uh, the total runtime for the new versions has yet to be revealed, but you can check out the synopsis for the Rebel Moon director's cut chapters below. Um, Zack Snyder's director cut of Rebel Moon will have an extra hour of footage, which is fine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it says no... Uh, it says the the original 2017 theatrical version clocked in at two hours long, while the Snyder Cut was released to streaming on Max came in a little over four hours. That was, you know, of course, Justice League. So if they're, you know, I'm fine with them adding an extra hour to each yeah. of them because we know that there's more there, you know? So. I'm banking on it. Yeah, for real, right? But those are some, like, those titles to me are better. Yeah. Like you have you have the a child of fire and the scar giver, and then the director's cuts called Chalice of Blood and Curse of Forgiveness. Mm, yeah, a little more time those to think about it. Yeah, those are better titles than the original titles, in my opinion. You know. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited. Agreed. So August, I wonder if they're going to release them together. This is what like, it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, they might release them like a week apart or something, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm very curious to see if they drop the numbers of like what the viewership for the PG 13 cuts were versus the R cuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I, th I, I have a feeling that the R cuts are going to have more viewers overall and probably have better, hopefully have better scores since they have more time to, you know, there's more there, more content there. So. So speaking of Star Wars, Daisy Ridley reveals disappointing detail about her current Star Wars future. Uh, Daisy Ridley appeared on the Smartless podcast to promote her upcoming role in The Young Women in the Sea, or The Young Woman in the Sea, and was asked about her level of involvement in the upcoming Ray movies. During the conversation, Ridley revealed that she is only contracted for one new movie in the Star Wars universe, although she hopes to return for more. I'm doing one for now, Ridley said on the podcast. The actress then discussed her excitement for the upcoming project, describing it as a completely different film than her past involvement in the Star Wars sequels. She said, it's very cool, different writer, different director. It will be quite a different feeling, I imagine. Stephen Knight is writing and directing is Charmaine Obeyed Shinoi. Um, who has made some unbelievable documentaries, and it's very exciting. Uh, so we're going to have a documentary filmmaker come in to do Star Wars, right? Mm. Yeah, okay. 
Sounds and like then, a writer. Yeah, Stephen Knight is writing, who had written in the past. He wrote Peaky Blinders. Oh. Uh, Serenity. So. Serenity now. Yeah. So that, that's, you know, gives a little bit more of hopefulness to it, you know? Yeah. He, Especially he created. Yeah, he created and wrote Peaky Blinders, mm. so. Yeah. Bought the fucking Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Yeah, right. So she's only contracted for one, which they'll probably keep her on, on contract. Um, said Ridley said her fame ebbed and flowed following the release of The Force Awakens, speaking to Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett, three actors who all know about movie stardom. Ridley said, I didn't know what to expect, and everyone had made it out to be crazy, crazy, crazy. And obviously, as you all know, when things come out, there's a, a furry, a, fu- a furry of activity, mm. a fury of activity, <laughs> and then things calm down again. So it was comforting. It was confronting because it was strange initially for people to want to chat, and I'm not that chatty. And then it sort of goes away. It took its time to calm. So, I liked Ray as a character. I like her. Yeah, I like Daisy Ridley. Yeah, I, I like I the just, actress. Yeah, so not a her problem. Definitely not. No, I dug Definitely a little deeper. Not. Both Snyder films, same day. Oh, oh, la la. Oh, well, hello. Yeah. So that should be fun. And four hour if they're four hours a piece, each one's got an extra hour. What's that? I mean, so eight hours of Snyder cut, eight piece and a biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I need the biscuit after yeah. the eight. You know, like what? I hope they do chapters. Yeah, that That'd would be, be nice. Cool. But, yeah, that would be super cool. So, last up here, Avengers Five will feature more than sixty MCU characters <laughs> and one of Marvel's largest productions. Oh God. Yeah, so the upcoming MCU outing Avengers 5, formerly Avengers the Kang Dynasty, could Mm. prove to be the most epic offering in the franchise so far, with a new report claiming that more than 60 MCU characters could reprise their roles in the movie. Alongside news that Deadpool and Wolverine director Sean Levy is the top choice to helm the project, a report by Deadline has revealed that sources have informed them of the huge ensemble cast that will be brought together to fight for the multiverse in one of Marvel's largest productions to date. Quote, Sources close to both projects say more than 60 MCU characters could reprise their roles, including everyone from Mark Ruffalo, Hemsworth, and Benedict Cumbersnatch to Tom Hiddleston, Samuel Liu, and Karen Gillum. As revealed in the report, the likes of Doctor Strange, the Hulk, Thor, Loki, and uh, more are just some of the heroes expected to return, return and team up in Avengers 5. And according to these same sources, Avengers 5 will, would feature all these characters and as an ensemble rather than as a core group as seen in the first two Avengers movies. Unlike the first four films in which there were there was a core group that consisted of RDJ, uh, Chrissy Evans, Scarlett Joe. Hemsworth and Ruffalo, many of the characters in this film would have equal footing, making it more of an ensemble feature instead of a handful of characters leading the team. It's due to land in theaters on May 1st, 2026. So the only... damn. Well, the only MCU film that we're getting this year is Deadpool. Yeah. So... It gives them time to work I on mean, it. It's you know? a while. 60 characters is a lot. Yeah, it is. I mean, whoa. Yeah, and I have a feeling that we're going to get a lot of characters from uh, the series. Did you show those seri- names or did it say Chrissy? No, you didn't. No, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's uh, going to be a lot of just they show up on screen and it's like, okay, it's them. Yeah. So RDJ confirmed. No, well, they haven't confirmed officially. I mean, come, I mean, if we're you, you doing multiverse do stuff, yeah, I know, right? And that, and that's the other thing. If this is a multiversal story, it's like, are we going to get 
different versions of the characters, this, that, and the other, and what does that look like, and how does, you know what I'm saying? I honestly think that they're going to be doing, they should do Avengers versus X-Men, but I don't know if they're going to have enough time to do that. This but, may lead up to that. Yeah. You know, with the whole. Yeah. Man, All right. They need, they need to cook on that one. Yeah. Say okay, so check this out. By the time RDJ comes back, it will be eight years since I we last saw Iron Man in Endgame. I mean, so they've almost waited the full ten. Yeah, and that's a, that's a back. lot of time. I mean, oh yeah, to do a small thing like don't bring him back for good. But, you know, yeah, you can show up like, hey kid. What's wild is like day. the amount of content, and especially the amount of quality content has pivoted so hard you know what i mean mm -hmm. like the first 10 years of mcu we kept getting great films you know yeah. great characters and then this second you know the second 10 years of mcu has been very man lackluster yeah off and on mm -hmm. hopefully deadpool's gonna kick it in the fucking i hope so high gear. i really hope so But yeah, that was all the movie news that I found interesting. I'm ready for trailers. Trailer main. <laughs> Trailer main the God. Yeah. All right. Full screen. Play. Is it playing? Mm hmm. This looks low okay. budget, but it's shot nice. Like it's got a nice. Okay. Well, hateful aid action there. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that shot. That's a cool shot. Yeah. <laughs> it don't look bad. It don't look bad. For a Saban film. Yeah. <laughs> Saban. Saban. I'll watch it just I'll watch it just to see what the hell more context of that is. Yeah. What a goddamn day. Oh, I got an ad. Mm-hmm. All right. Backed up. Everybody's ad finish? Yes. Star Baker? Matt Smith. Mm. So he got an accent? I don't know. Mm. Evan? Evan! Look at his haircut. Or the lack thereof. Okay. Be the devil. Ready mysterious. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, extra <laughs> wide. I 
I don't think we've ever seen him in something like this, have we? I don't think so. Ta da! Yeah. It's going to be him that's the fucked up one. Me. It looks pretty interesting. Interesting. I'm here for it. Yeah. All of that awkward horror like that. A doll. We got a little sausage patty. They're doing a sequel. It's already here. They just announced a sequel last week. Wow. The. Original came out like at least ten years ago, it's right? There we go. Yeah, so it was funny. It's been so long since I've seen it. Just had like, a lot of sex jokes, and it was yeah. made for adults. Kevin Smith was like, "I don't know why they." Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. <laughs> An eight course television event. So this is going to be a series. Rup row. Mm. He went, Oh, fuck. Is he chewing gum? Yeah, I think so. Blind melons and smash pumpkins. That was a bagel, by the way. You me hunt. Holy shit. This is out there, man. Yeah. Bama Tui. Their fingers. <laughs> Told you it was a bagel. <laughs> wow. Man, is that today? Oh, July. Don't want too shabby. No, not too bad. Batista. Mm. Thought you were looking at Batista. We got Terry Crews too. Is this yeah. I mean Yeah. What? All right, all right. Lionsgate.
Damn. Hell yeah. That's a chick from Moon Knight. Not Moon Knight. Ribble Moon. Ribble Moon. Oh. Oh, shit. Why did they put his name in the fucking thing? Yeah. Let it go, Joe. He looks weird with hair. Yeah. Uh, so he's a hitman. Okay. Molly Cyrus was busy. Yeah. Fuck. That makes sense. It should. They're going to quarter that dude. The shit hit. I know that's right. <laughs> then lit his cigarette for him. I like that. I mean, yeah. It don't look bad. It don't look bad at all. I'll definitely be watching that. Yeah. We got some so Ninja Nurdles. Some... <laughs> Ninja Nurdles? Ninja Nurdles. Oh, shit. All right. This is the Paramount series. I think it's a series. Animated. I mean, I like the art style already. Yeah. It's kind of like the movie, and it's got that Spider-Man frame rate. Yeah. It's cool. I still haven't watched that movie. I haven't either. I heard it was all right. Like, Interesting. Exterminate. <laughs> How did a turtle get braces? Um Oh. Interesting. Yeah. The movie we trailer. Maxine? Yeah. I'm ready for yeah. this this Maxine yeah. movie to drop. I'm ready for it. No 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 ad? No, I'm good. Look at the aspect ratio. You saw that clip I sent you on TikTok? 
with her with her putting yeah. her mold in her head. Yes, yeah. It's gonna be in here. All right, I'm gonna kill you. She's gonna kill her. She's perfect. Love that guy. Who knew? Yeah, right. Like some throwaway shit he decided to branch off with. Pod locked. Yeah, I'll take that number that. Later, later. Yeah, got an ad. I want to be a star. I got an ad. To Maxine her. fucking Max. Oh, what oh. do we have here? Oh. Cocky twenty eight ninety eight. Why so we're going to, <laughs> We got future violence happening. A D. I mean. Oh, dude, this gets wild. Turn the subtitles on. Thought the sound was fucked up, didn't you? Yeah. Check Is this, this Mad out. Max? It looks like... No, it's Mad Max. <laughs> it's the pyramid from Godzilla. The fuck? Talk about some world building. Yeah. Oh. This low key might be a masterpiece. Yeah, for real, real, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, Mad Max ain't got shit like that. There's three of him. She looks like a lick the sheet off my boot here. Yeah. Bollywood summer hike. Oh. His ass took what? That's some wild shit, man. Yeah. I mean... It's Sand Wars. They saw Rebel Moon and Dune. Yeah. You'll start seeing the movies come out and it's like Mad Max, Rebel Moon, Dune. Yeah. Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wawanda. Deadpool. We might have to watch this. Yeah, uh, it looks really I good. Mean, yeah. There's a it lot going on good. there. Yeah, for real. It's going to be like six hours long. Yeah, I'm going to keep up with that. I'm sure it'll be like eight years before it comes out. But Yeah. Hell so yeah. honorable mention real quick before we 
wrap everything up here. I've been watching Outer Range. Travis watched the first season. Yeah, and I start. Yeah, well, dude, late. I got an email. Yeah, it's like you, you this stuff that you watch. Yeah, yeah. No, I did <laughs> oh, you sent the email? Yeah. Well, I, it was like I could share it with you and let you know it was there. Oh, okay. Because then I realized okay. when I went and looked, I was like, oh, dude, I can see everything you've been watching. Yeah, you go oh, to yeah. mine. You know, you. I like that little thing. It'll show me. It's like you've watched. He's watched nine hundred movies. Like, yeah. You know? And I could see. It's I was wild. like, oh, he's been watching Wilfred. I was yeah, like, yeah. Stop. And then I went and looked. I was like, oh, I don't have my second. Like, oh. So I was fucking last night, dude, late night. You know, typing <laughs> away. We then watched... I shared it, so we'll let you know. Let's see. I'm gonna see what episode we're on on season two. Because I think we watched either two or three. Yeah, episodes you got her locked earlier. in too. Yeah, yeah, That's it goes great. it goes quick, yeah. So the next episode is episode four that we're gonna be watching on season two. And wow. Yeah. Like whoa. You're already on four? Yeah, episode four is season uh, we watched the first three. Yeah. The next episode will be four. Yeah. Damn, you'll be done in a couple of days. Like Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. dude, it's and it's just getting better. Yeah. Like, like the with each. the cop wakes up in the past. Yeah, it's like what? The buffalo, yeah, the, the Yes. The sequence where dude was in a coma. What dude? And I'm just trying to make sure I don't say the wrong things. The 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 guy next door? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the crazy sequences that they were that they were showing while he was in his coma. Mm-hmm. Like they when they go off the rails they go they go off the rails you know what i mean great show yeah it really is so i've i've we've been enjoying that quite a bit me and marina both so that's sci-fi dude and that's the way to do it that show yeah i think i'm gonna try to get my grandfather to watch it i think he'll like it yeah yeah because of the way that it just just it muddles the line like it just kind of yeah it trickles the sci-fi out too. who knows what that hole does yeah. I think you so can it, get her involved in severance. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. But it's it's been a it's been a a fun watch Fucking so far. Roller and Josh Oscar. Rowan. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The cast is great. Oh, Bill Poland's uh, kid. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. Oh, and it? what's wild is okay. The other son that went through the hole Yes. What's his Perry. situation like right now? I don't know when uh, that's revealed. Well, have you so seen he him? Goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he he goes to the bar, or he shows up on the farm, and then goes to the bar, and he's like, and there's his dad know, my, and his mom. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, what, dude? The yeah. guy playing young Josh Brolin is killing it. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. He looks like dude from Kubla Khan. <laughs> he kind of does. Yeah, I'm waiting He's for like, him to break off. I don't know what day it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's been it's been great, man. Yeah. And like the 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 girl, mm-hmm. you know, like her like her getting involved in like religion and stuff. She's fucking I, nice. That's yeah, that's something that I was like, they're they're really leaning into this whole religion thing now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is cool. Like, I think that adds a, an extra layer to what's happening here. But like, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's been really, really. Good. It's just Josh it's Brolin's great show, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so good. He, yeah. He's just. Oh, so I hope fun. it keeps going. Like, yeah. It's. I mean, I would say it's Breaking Bad good. Yeah, it's so up far. there. Yeah. Cause it's like what the fuck, and then like, great writing. Yes, and, and they. Not... I wasn't gonna tell you when you was like. I mean, it's the girl, right? And I was like, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, you know, because I won't, conf- you know, confirm. He'll confirm, but I mean, it's her, or yeah. is it? Uh, I mean, it's her. And it's like the mom shows up. Yeah, but then you see why she like... don't remember. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, the memory. You see, they're into some like Jared Leto 
<laughs> cult level shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like what is happening? Yeah, lock cabin. Shit. Yeah. So, but it's it's good, man. I've really been enjoying it. So, I'm hoping that it does well enough for them to finish the story out. Yeah. Because, like, dude. I think the ratings are good. I mean, they gotta be. And I make sure, like, I watched it, you know, when it dropped, I watched the whole, I crammed it all on uh, fucking, what you call it, Prime Video, just, yeah. Yeah. You know, even if I have something for myself over here, I'll still. Yeah. Put it Give down. Give them the rating. Them. Yeah. Like I did with Give tires. them the view. Yeah. I always rate it. I'm like, yep, this shit's the shoot. Yeah. Speaking of tires, we I knocked that out in one I saw. sitting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw. That was, that was great. Hilarious. Hope, you know, bring it back. Yeah, for sure. Right. It's already confirmed. It's coming back. I mean, they they really started getting their footing. Yeah, towards the end, it's like okay, yes. we know who we are. Yeah, yeah. And it's like oh, it's over. Yeah, they were just testing fuck, the waters. I keep seeing that quote like all over fucking Twitter and stuff, where it's like, "Do what you hate every day, then die under a car." <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, dude, I love it. You know? Yeah. Do what you hate every day, and then die under a car. It's like, oh god. But I'm for real. When you run out of out of range, I, if you want to watch something serious, yeah, I think you can get in there with Severance. Yeah, because it's that good. It's good. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like that first episode will hook you hard. Yeah, because you're, you're like, ah, I gotta know more. I mean, yeah. Especially you're going in with this this out of range because it just trickles it. It's like. Yeah. Oh, we're on the farm. Oh, okay. We got it. All right. Well, what's, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. What's this hole? Now I got to know. Yeah. There's Indians on the other side. Whoa. That, which is wild. Like that whole sequence. And it's like, like how the fuck did she make it? Because at the end of the episode that we watched, she comes through the hole. Yeah. But she didn't go through the hole to get there. Like she was on that land, just like fucking wandering around looking for fucking Bigfoot or whatever that guy was saying was out there. You know, the mammoth. Mm. And oh, the one guy that was like, "There's, we've seen dinosaurs. Yeah, like, in the caves and shit. What? It's like, what? Yeah. 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 And I like the continuity of stuff where they're looking through those pictures. It's like, oh, here's a picture of my mm-hmm. mom. And that chick picks it up and it's like an old school, yeah. you know, from the 1800s picture, and you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Good, good writing, good continuity. Amazon Prime, dude. Yeah, killing it. They got some shit. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you watched three episodes today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're like, I got I off. I would have watched four if it was, you know. Yeah. I got off work at a decent time and we uh, got some food and we just sit down and well, after the second episode, Marine is like, go ahead and cue another yeah. one. And I was like, all right. No, you ain't I mean, gonna, I ain't gonna argue with me. Yeah. Cause you usually try to happened? do two at a time. You yeah. Know, and if, if the streaming gods, the binge gods will allow yes. it, then yeah. Oh, go ahead and play another one. Okay. I'm doing a split day on Thursday and then uh, I'm supposed to be off on Friday. So we'll definitely probably have You'll it be done. done. Yeah. You'll by probably Friday. be done before then, dude. Yeah, for sure. Because the, the end of the, the cliffhangers are just so, I got to know. Yeah, yeah. I got to know. It's hard not to yeah. do at least two at a time. Right. Um, And like, speaking of Wilfred real quick, yeah, I forgot how fucking genius this show is. I saw you were watching the U.S. Yes, yeah. yeah. Went in with that one first, yeah, you know. Of course. But what dude, him, him humping that fucking uh, bear. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I haven't watched that shit since it came out, so I need to go back and revisit. Dude, on one of the episodes, I fucking lost it because he's like, it's the boyfriend moves in with the chick next door, you know? Yeah. And he's like, he's like, he's trying to hump bear. And he's like, I'm emasculated. I can't, you know, get it going. And all the guy next door. 
Yeah, yeah. And Ryan's like, it happens to all, you know, he's like, no, nah, just we got to do something about this. Yeah. And then they end up running the dude off and Wilfred's like, I'm going to go tear a new <laughs> asshole in Bear's <laughs> neck. And I was like, what the fuck? Where the fuck comes up with this, you know? A genius. Gonna go, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm going to go tear a new asshole in Bear's neck. That's hilarious. Fuck. But yeah. So, uh, I mean, next week we're definitely going to be doing the next episode of Acolyte, right? Yeah, drop today. What, uh, you still want to do the, uh, camp movies, Trav? Mm hmm. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm cool with that. Or I mean, there's a lot of shit to watch. There is a lot of stuff. I mean, I, was, I mean, if he ain't gonna call it out, I mean, because when it comes to camp movies, you know, we got heavyweights. Yeah, I think Moonrise Kingdom is a camp movie. Yeah that that was gonna be my yeah. pick. Yeah, I'm gonna pick one because that's one of my favorite Anderson flicks. I don't think I've seen that since it came out and it was 2012. Yeah, it's been a minute, right? I mean, Trav called it out last week. You know, we might as well. Yeah. I think we're going to do that too because we got the Star Wars to talk about. It'll be, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll always get around. I also have that. Here's what we could do. Maybe by the end of, you know, we'll pick three of them. Mm -hmm. That uh, Hundreds of Beavers is up. And the remember we watched the trailer? Yeah. Like black yeah. and white. It was like, dude, people are like, that shit's amazing. Okay. So maybe we slap that on. We also got Boy Kills World, you know. Yeah. There's a lot to watch. Yeah, for sure. Like it's a never ending. Yeah. It's like no matter how much you've watched, there's it's there's more. Yeah. We can't even just... catch up. Yeah. But also unfrosted. We have to do that. Yes. Yeah. I think we should try to tackle them in order then, you know. Yeah. Fall guy. Like, that's all I got to. I'll do an audible mention on Challengers. I watched that. That's the one with the Spider Man's girlfriend. Yes. They, it was the, the tennis movie. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be like her. Uh, there's a murder on the dance floor. What was that? Oh yeah, um, Saltburn. Saltburn. Yeah. They were like, "This is her Saltburn," and I was like, "I get it," but the best part of the movie is like the last ten minutes. It's just, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" In the last ten minutes, dude. <laughs> the whole match at the end is just amazing. Right. I don't even fuck with tennis. Yeah. I mean, who's got time to fuck with tennis? Let's not me. Yeah. I don't watch that or golf. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I'm that good. takes a long time. But uh, yeah. And a race, racing. I'm like, you yes. mean they're going to do 672 laps? Yeah. In a circle? And the All first thing I through. said was, how do they go to the bathroom? And I Googled it. You know what they well, do? They got, they got like a thing nah, in there right they just go i mean if they gotta go dude they just go nobody wants to wear a catheter well i figured it'd be like a space suit type deal nope. where it's like there's a little catch mm -mm. cup you know now nah, dude they just go and it's like warm yeah <laughs> just let it go man yeah well dumb and dumber reference so you want to do the you want to do some camp movies? I mean, I'm down for some Moonrise. Yeah, y'all want to start it out with Moonrise Kingdom? I'm down with it. It's been a minute since I, but I really did enjoy that flick whenever it came out. So I'm interested to see how it holds up now. Yeah, that was one of my pulls. When I mean, I called it out. So I was like, Moonrise. I mean, yeah. If you're doing camp movies, you have to watch Heavyweights. Oh yeah, like, for sure. That's, and then I don't know where we go from there. But 
for sure. Maybe we'll, I mean, we'll make. Yeah, we'll make do. Hell yeah! All right. Well, let's do it. Checks on the mail. Flag right. Yep. 